Hello everyone. This is the circuit of a DC motor speed controller. This speed controller can take input voltage anywhere between 6 to 50 volt. Can supply maximum output current of 15 ampere with the use of a proper heat sink. Have gate over voltage protection and protection against the flyback of voltage spikes. Apart from this, this circuit can be easily used with an Arduino a similar microcontroller board if you don't want to wrap your head around capacitor resistor or wires because i know it can be bit messy after connecting the required voltage input and motor to the output terminal the speed of the motor can be easily increased or decreased using the potentiometer This video is sponsored by JLC PCB. They are the leading manufacturer of prototype PCBs for all kinds of electronics and IoT projects. They design PCBs within 24 hours of ordering and deliver them to your doorstep surprisingly fast due to their quick shipping process. But before ordering, remember that there are always some delivery charges included like in any other shipping process. So don't just blame them if you live very far from China. All you have to do then is upload your Gerber file to their website and wait. Of course, till you get the PCBs. At first, this circuit may seem very complicated. So let's simplify it. This circuit can be divided into three main parts. First part is voltage regulator or step down part. Second part is PWM generator and third part is the switching circuit now let's dive into each part one by one for the sake of better understanding i'm going through the switching circuit first switching circuit as the name itself suggests is used to switch the output on and off but at a very high frequency here a mosfet is used to do the job mosfet can switch the high output voltage connected between its drain and source if a threshold voltage is applied at its gate this threshold voltage is generally very less than the voltage mosfet is capable of switching or the voltage that is applied between its drain and source also as the voltage at the gate of the mosfet is increased beyond its gate threshold voltage more and more current flows through drain to source a word of caution here the threshold voltage is the voltage where the mosfet starts to conduct a little bit to make the mosfet conduct enough to drive a significant load it needs some additional voltage also so this way if a dc motor is connected between gate and source of the mosfet voltage across it and the speed can be controlled by controlling the gate voltage and to do so we need a variable voltage at the gate now here comes the pwm generator to the rescue This variable voltage can be easily supplied by using a PWM voltage. PWM or pulse width modulation is a type of technique used to get any voltage between 0 and maximum of the input voltage. This is achieved by switching the input voltage at a certain frequency with certain duty cycle. Suppose we have an input voltage of 5 volt. It can either be 5 volt or 0 volt. Now If it is switched on and off with very high frequency we can get waveform like this let's say on time of this waveform is 50% of the total time this 50% is called the duty cycle of the pwm wave which gives us final voltage of 2.5 volts as this on time or duty cycle increases the overall voltage increases when duty cycle reaches 100% we get 5 volts output and when it is at 0% we get 0 volt output this is called pulse width modulation as we are modulating the width of the pulse to get variable voltage the speed controller here generates the pwm wave by using a triple five timer ic this ic provides the required variable voltage at the gate of the mosfet by working in its stable mode now there is a certain input voltage limit of the ic which is surely less than the voltage limit of the speed controller hence to provide suitable working voltage 
to triple five timer IC, a voltage regulator circuit is used, which provides fixed voltage to the IC. LM317 voltage regulator is used here for this purpose. LM317 is capable of providing voltage between 1.5 volt to 37 volts. It is used here due to its several advantages over other voltage regulators, such as programmable output voltage, high output current, and better line and load regulation. Circuit diagram you see on the screen is the schematic of the speed controller. Let's look at the circuit in more detail along with all the components you need to build this speed controller. I am using bench power supply to power the circuit. Let's set up the input voltage to around 12 volts and use the oscilloscope to analyze the waveforms. A 330 microfarad capacitor is connected across the input power terminals to smooth out the input DC, followed by a 330 ohm resistor in series with 47 microfarad capacitor which forms a low pass filter, which then powers the LM317 voltage regulator. This voltage regulator is programmed using these two resistors to give a constant voltage of 9 volts. It's worth mentioning that to produce this 9 volt however, dropout voltage must be greater than 2.5 volts or input voltage must be at least 11.5 volts. To get voltage output other than this, you have to change these resistor values according to the formula mentioned in datasheet. Here R1 is 6.2 kilo ohms and R2 is 1 kilo ohm. Since I adjust is in the range of microampere, we can ignore it here. This gives us an output voltage of 9 volts. This 9 volts is then used to power the triple 5 timer. First pin of the IC is grounded. Second and six are connected together, likewise fourth and eight. This 220 microfarad capacitor smooths out the incoming 9 volts. Now 1 kilo ohm resistor, 2 1 and 4 0 0 7 diodes, 100k potentiometer and 10 nanofarad capacitor forms an RC charge discharge circuit causing a PWM output at third pin of the triple 5 timer which ultimately controls the gate of the MOSFET. If you want to know more about triple 5 timers and how they generate PWM wave then I suggest you to go through the tons of excellent articles available online. The most important aspect of PWM wave is its frequency and here is the triple five timer frequency formula for the same. You can calculate the frequency of the PWM output by using online calculators also. Placing the value of R1 which is 1 kilo ohm, capacitance which is around 7 nanofarad because of tolerance and other factors and the potentiometer value which is approximately 91 kilo ohms in my case. This gives us a frequency of 1100 Hz. Now of course, this is not accurate due to several other factors which affect the circuit. Actual frequency is 1.3 kHz which is almost constant for 0 to 100% duty cycle of the PWM output. This PWM output then controls the gate of the MOSFET connected through a 33 ohm resistor. IRF 3205S N channel MOSFET can handle current up to 110 ampere with proper cooling system and enough gate voltage. And voltage between drain and source can be 55 volt maximum, whereas gate to source voltage is 20 volt maximum. Source is grounded and drain is connected to one terminal of the output whereas other terminal to 12 volt. This way the motor is connected between positive of the 12 volt supply and drain of the MOSFET. Now to protect the MOSFET from voltage spikes caused by the motor, a short key diode is connected across the motor or between drain and positive of the 12 volt supply. Short key diodes are generally preferred in flyback diode applications because 
they have the lowest forward drop and are able to quickly respond to reverse bias or in other words short key diode have effectively instant reverse recovery time hence suitable for high frequency applications here is a short demo of this motor speed controller potentiometer controls the speed of the motor and the pwm wave generated by the triple five timer can be seen on the oscilloscope Measurements like duty cycle and V peak to peak can also be measured. Am I the designer of this circuit? No. This circuit is almost identical to this speed controller. I basically reverse engineered this controller. So if you want to know how I reverse engineered it, let me know in the comment section. I would love to make a video on this topic. This controller was sent to me by IC station long time ago. Its input voltage range is 10 to 50 volt and maximum current limit is 15 ampere. So if you want to have a controller which is small and precise, do check out IC station website. Now some important points worth mentioning here. First, for over voltage protection, you can use a Zena diode between gate and source of the MOSFET as specified in the schematic. Second, the motor I am controlling here is rated at 12V and takes up to 2A at maximum load, which is not that big of a load. Hence, 1kHz PWM frequency is fine here, but for big motors, the frequency must be above 15kHz and to adjust PWM frequency, either change the potentiometer value or the capacitor to get the desired frequency output. So keep that in mind when using big loads. Since this video is already too long, I thought why not cover the Arduino control part in another video. This way I can make tutorials more informative without worrying about video's length. So see you then and remember, electronics should be your first love if you want to succeed. Bye bye.